Hi, and welcome to a SonicWall Firewall video tutorial. My name is Micah Vorst. In this video, I'll set up a WAN interface so our end users can get out to the internet. Setting up a WAN interface is one of the first things to do when installing a new firewall. There are five different options when configuring a WAN interface. The most important or common choices are static and DHCP. Static setup allows a firewall administrator to manually configure the WAN interface. This includes the assigned IP address, subnet mask, default gateway, and of course, DNS servers. The second option is DHCP. If there is an upstream device that automatically hands out IP addresses, DHCP can be used to remove the manual work. Usually, if there are web servers or other types of servers that need to be accessed from the internet, using the static option is preferred. The remaining three options to use for WAN setup are PPPoE, PPTP, and L2TP. These options allow for server information, username and password, as well as different options for static or automatic IP assignment. Configuring a WAN interface allows end users to get to network resources and in most cases connects them to the internet. In our example, we haven't set up the interface yet, so our end users can't get online. Let's change that. In this demo, I'll use an NSA 6650 on SonicOS 6.5 firmware to configure a WAN interface using the static IP assignment. Let's go ahead and log in now. Before proceeding, now would be a good time to export a settings file and store it in a safe location. Let's do that now by navigating to Manage, Firmware and Backups, Import Export Configuration, and Export Configuration. The default file name is fine. We'll simply select Export and save to our Downloads folder. For this to work, we'll need to know our assigned interface IP, subnet mask, default gateway, and DNS servers. I have those with me, so we should be ready to configure the interface. Let's navigate to Network, Interfaces. Click the Edit icon next to the WAN interface. I'll use the X1 interface. Currently, how we have things set up is that the zone is already selected as WAN. But if you're using a different interface and it's not assigned, simply select WAN zone and then the IP assignment option. In our case, we'll select static. I have the information that I need, 10, 61, 134, 113. Subnet mask, 248. Default gateway, 10, 61, 134, 118. For DNS server, we'll just do a default Google server for now. At this time, I'm going to turn management off, but we're going to come back to that here in just a few moments. Let's click the Advanced tab. Under the Advanced tab, we can change link speed, change a default MAC address, the MTU size, and other administrative settings. The defaults are fine here, so let's go back to the General tab and talk about the Management option for a moment. Depending on your environment, you may want to manage the firewall via the WAN interface. I strongly recommend that if you enable WAN management, that you modify the default access rule and change the source to known sources that you'll be managing from. For example, your home or office. Let's click Manage HTTPS and OK. I'll create an address object for where I'll most often manage the firewall. Navigate to Manage, Objects, Address Objects. We'll create a new address object called Custom Management 1. We'll click Add, Custom Management 1. We'll give it a WAN zone. This is not my real IP address, but it is an example of where I would be coming from if I wanted to manage the firewall. We'll select Add. 
Now, in the future, I may want to add more IP addresses. So I'll create a custom management group and add this new address object to the group. Simply select the address groups tab, add, custom management group, and then add the address object that was recently created. Next, let's go to Rules, Access Rules, and select WAN to WAN. If you don't see it right away, make sure you change the from and to to both be WAN. All right, we see a few different access rules. Our first is to allow ping. The second is for HTTP management, HTTPS management, actually. I'm only going to change this second rule because I'm okay with people pinging the interface to make sure it's up. We'll edit this second access rule, change the source from any to the custom management group. Once we hit OK, we can verify that the change has been made by hovering our mouse over the custom group. Great, we see the address object. As we continue to add more address objects, we'll see more and more hosts being added to this list. This will effectively lock down remote management to only my specific IP addresses. After we're done configuring the interface, we'll use the built-in system diagnostic tool to confirm that the firewall is online. Navigate to Investigate and then System Diagnostics. We're going to select all the test server options under System Diagnostics, we'll change the Diagnostic Tool to Check Network Settings. As you can see here, we have a few different servers that we can test from. We'll select all of the servers and click Test All Selected. This simply sends out a, an acknowledgement and waits for a response. So for some it's pinging, for some it's uh, also HTTPS connections. Perfect. So we can see that the firewall is able to access servers that are online. From our end user, we can test by opening up a command prompt and using ping. The test that once failed now works. We know everything is working as expected. I recommend saving another settings file so that you have a last known good configuration. I hope this tutorial was helpful. To learn more about configuring SonicWall products, visit www.sonicwall.com support.